Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel Master Mojo Ash. In this video, I will show you Dragon Ball Super, 10 things that make Ultra Instinct better than Ultra Ego. Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego are both depicted as pinnacles as power, but there are certain factors that give the former an advantage over the latter. Akira Toriyama's Dragon Ball Super has been a very satisfying extension of his beloved shonen franchise. Dragon Ball Super has been very careful to not mess with the basics of the series, but it's also found sensible ways to expand upon the franchise's scope and embrace nostalgia in a manner that's faithful to the original series. A constant through Dragon Ball is the presence of bold and powerful transformations that allow the heroes to access new heights of strength. Dragon Ball Super goes above and beyond in this manner, not only with several new Super Saiyan transformations, but also the more powerful Ultra Instinct and Vegeta's recent Ultra Ego metamorphosis. Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego are both depicted as pinnacles as power, but there are certain factors that give the former an advantage over the latter. Before I start the list please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon. Number 10. It is different stages. Calculable progress is something that Dragon Ball's characters love, and it's very easy for someone to declare that they're stronger than another individual if one can turn Super Saiyan 3 and the other can only become Super Saiyan 2. Goku's road to Ultra Instinct perfection happens by accident, and he begins to learn that there are various stages of mastery that Ultra Instinct features. Goku goes through Autonomous Ultra Instinct, Ultra Instinct Sign, and Perfected Ultra Instinct, each of which have their specific features. Alternatively, Ultra Ego doesn't seem to have other levels, at least from what Vegeta has demonstrated. Number 9. It can channel energy into a powerful avatar state, Goku receives various lessons on the ways of Ultra Instinct from Whis and Meru's, but it's still a transformation that's full of surprises, some of which unexpectedly come into play in battle. One of the toughest battles that Goku experiences in Dragon Ball Super is against Planet Eater Moro, who eventually merges with the planet itself. Goku responds to this accelerated threat with a gigantic avatar form that's able to properly wrestle against the transformed Moro. Ultra Ego doesn't have an equivalent to this heightened state. Number 8. It provides a natural defense in addition to a power boost, Dragon Ball Super does an excellent job to explain that Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego reflect contrasting battle sensibilities, which is why they're perfect for Goku and Vegeta to explore, Dragon Ball. 10 Things That Don't Make Sense About Ultra Instinct Goku, Ultra Instinct still provides its user with a natural boost in strength, but the central principle of the transformation revolves around a zen-like state of peace where the evasion of attacks is second nature. Ultra Ego prioritizes strength and aggression and it lacks this natural defense mechanism that can keep Ultra Instinct users safe from harm. Number 7. It imbues the user with God Key, it's fascinating to examine the different forms of energy that power characters in various anime series, and when it comes to Dragon Ball, the majority of individuals use the energy life force of Ki as the fuel for their attacks. Ki gets developed throughout the course of Dragon Ball, and it's explained that God Ki exists, which makes such individuals practically impossible to detect by mere mortals. Ultra Instinct is the natural state of angels, and Goku's shifts into Ultra Instinct are punctuated with surprise over his God Ki. Number 6. It comes with its own share of unique technique advancements, Ultra Ego is still a recent reveal in Dragon Ball Super and there are surely more secrets about the transformation that will be revealed as Vegeta continues to perfect the form. As it stands, Ultra Ego gives Vegeta tremendous strength and battle resilience, but Goku's time with Ultra Instinct also leads to him revealing new techniques. In Ultra Instinct form, Goku executes the Divine Kamehameha, which is arguably the most powerful variation of his signature attack. The video games also feature an ultimate instinct, Kamehameha for Goku. Vegeta doesn't seem to reap the same benefits from Ultra Ego. Number 5. It naturally activates without the user needing to do anything. The circumstances that surround various Dragon Ball transformations can sometimes be the very roadblock that holds a character back from reaching the next level. 
Vegeta vigorously trains under Beerus to learn the ways of Ultra Ego, and it's only after the dedicated work that he first transforms, however, Ultra Instinct is something that individuals can tap into completely by accident and still experience a temperamental version of the transformation's perks. Goku is also able to naturally access Ultra Instinct without transforming, which allows him to save energy after he grows more comfortable with the form. Number 4. Its accuracy increases with Super Scion transformations. Another advantage that Ultra Instinct has over its Ultra Ego counterpart is that it can become strengthened through the combined use of other transformations. This is possible since Autonomous Ultra Instinct allows the user to naturally tap into this power without transformation. When Goku becomes Super Saiyan God or Super Saiyan Blue, his Autonomous Ultra Instinct abilities become even more precise and powerful. Goku demonstrates as much during a robust energy wave onslaught from Granola. Goku's Ultra Instinct evasion skills go into overdrive and benefit from his additional strength. Number 3. Its transformation is more aesthetically pleasing and doesn't alter physical appearance. The most important aspect of a new transformation in Dragon Ball is that it's actually practical in battle and offers a newfound reservoir of power, but aesthetic features also play a huge role. Arguably, the most interesting element of Super Saiyan 3 is its absurdly long hair, for example. Ultra Instinct is very easy on the eyes, and it doesn't drastically change the user's body, but instead rewards them with a silver and white aura and energy. Ultra Ego puts more of a physical strain on the user's body and morphs Vegeta into more of a Neanderthal state. Number 2. It's possible for humans and other species to learn it. A very interesting detail about Ultra Instinct is that it seems to have appeared at certain points throughout Dragon Ball before Goku or the audience had any idea that it even existed. Ultra Instinct is a zen-like state that anyone can access under the right state of calm. It's not suited for everyone, which is why Vegeta turns his back on it, but other sage martial artists, like Master Rashi, exhibit Ultra Instinct desk traits when under extreme pressure. This could also be true for Ultra Ego, but the state caters towards gods of destruction, none of which have been depicted as humans. Number 1. It acts as a culmination of everything that Goku's learned, any anime series that goes on for as long as Dragon Ball definitely gets a lot of mileage out of nostalgic callbacks and serialized storytelling that actually pays service to the past rather than random enemies that show up out of nowhere. During Goku's training to master Ultra Instinct, he experiences an epiphany that he's actually been unwittingly preparing for this by his previous mentors and martial arts masters. This makes Ultra Instinct a satisfying culmination of Goku's progress as a fighter, whereas Ultra Ego actually forces Vegeta to regress on some level as he embraces his baser and more aggressive state. 